le développement durable. Sustainable development. Qu'on vient toujours à mobiliser d'ailleurs de façon that très we need and develop un increasingly so, but it has failed. D'une quarantaine d'années. It has failed si over the last 40 years. If we look at the foundation of sustainable development, the famous three pillars, which were expressed during the first major summit on humans and the environment in June 1972. If you look at the major challenges of sustainable development, which consisted in decreasing inequalities between human beings and find a solution to major environmental issues, we have to admit the fact that this is a total failure. In terms of distribution of wealth, we've never achieved the level of inequalities we've achieved today, although a large number of people escaped great poverty. And in terms of disruption, overall deterioration of the environment, we've crossed all the lines in terms of climate, pressure on resources, etc., etc. So sustainable development has failed. What was it based on? On an illusion, the illusion that we could continue growing the GDP when material and energy underlying flows would have decreased, which did not occur. So, by and large, the global consumption of energy continues growing as the GDP uh, grows. It is not so much correlated for materials because all our transactions are not necessarily using materials, but by and large, for 10% of GDP growth at global level, we have 6% increase in consumption of resources. So we have failed, disconnected, separating GDP growth from the growth in the consumption of underlying flows, and we will possibly never achieve that. Hence, Talking about circular economy makes sense because this would help achieve the objective which used to be that of sustainable development. But there again, there are no miracles. This circular economy must be measured at global level at the end of the day. The objective would be to reduce global pressure which are exercised on the environment, which is a global environment, which is the Earth system in terms of uh, climate, biodiversity, and interactions with uh, biochemical processes and, and the resources that we ourselves are using, that we pretend are renewable. But if we go too far, we uh, ruin the ability of stocks to renew themselves, which is what we did for fish resources, for instance. So when you understand it like this, the circular economy is a must, but it's meaningful only if we manage and reduce global pressure. And the way we sell it today consists in measuring things, but only on a microscopic level, the produced unit at a micro-local level, that of a, an industrial operator, a stakeholder, whatever. But it doesn't make sense if for each unit that I produce, I consume less energy, less material, but then if cost for access to market decreases and I sell more of this unit, then at the end of the day, I consume more resources. So circular economy must reflect global, must relate to, to, must be in relation to global indicators. And if we want to do that, it's a bit like permaculture. It's a permacircular economy that we should target. And one of the crucial indicators is 
the the quantity of input materials, and if it grows sharply year on year, all the efforts we'll be making will be in vain, and at the end of the day, the pressure we exercise on the planet will be increasing. So as a matter of fact, the, an economy that would be closer to circular economy is a very demanding because it requires controlling the growth rate of what enters the system and in some cases what comes in the system should decrease, not for everything, but for some things. And when it really decreases, we need to have a very, very small growth rate. And at one stage we should achieve stabilization or even decrease. So this is how we need and understand circular economy. We need and measure the results, uh, looking at the reduction of, our, of the pressure we exercise on resources and looking at the pressure we exercise on the great balances on the, on the planet.